How's it going guys? In this video what we are going to be doing is replacing a, a switch for the stove. What the problem that we're having is, is this particular burner right here is uh, no matter where you put the control knob it goes to high and just stays there. I mean if you put it on low you can boil water within no time. I mean it just does not control temperature whatsoever. So what I have done is I've actually already pulled the back loose previously just to make sure that I got the right part number and for this particular stove of course this is a Whirlpool stove uh, I've, you know, I've got the part number on order. There are several different ones out there depending on your stove. Uh, I would just recommend that you pull the back off of that stove. Look up the part number. I will be putting the part number for this particular stove down in the description of this video. If you want to go there and check it out if you have a stove similar to this. Uh, that way you can go and find the dual zone controller. Now uh, remember, there is a difference between the dual zone controllers and the single zone controllers. Now, you, if you get the wrong one, it's not going to work. So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to be pulling the stove out. And step one is you want to always want to make sure that you unplug the stove anytime you work with electricity. You don't want to do anything to make it dangerous for yourself. So here we go. Once you've got the stove unplugged and pulled out these back panels, you can remove all of the screws and pull off the entire panel. Uh, if you are very careful, you can even just take out a few of the screws and they will flex just enough to allow you to get access to this one. Uh, but if you're worried about bending it, just go ahead take off the whole back panel and you know that way it kind of helps to ensure that you don't damage it but if you're very careful with what you do here and if you do remove enough of the screws you're still not going to damage in any ways unless you just get uh, just overly aggressive with it so what we're going to do now is i'm just going to pull the screws out and go ahead and start getting this ready to replace And that right there is plenty of room to be able to access this switch because it is literally right here on the end. So instead of having to take all of this off, I can just kind of hold that back and I will be able to do everything I need to do right here. Now the next step is to remove the switch, loosen it up, and we're just going to get it out here where we can work with it a little easier. To remove the knob, they just pull straight off just like that. And there's two screws right here. We're going to remove those and we will be able to pull the switch out from behind the stove just like that and there's one there's two and guys if uh, you're in the market for a driver a, an impact driver I'll leave a link to this DeWalt down in the description as well We got those front screws out. Now I'm just going to reach in here and you can see here is the original switch. You can see the harness that is connected to both sides of it. This is the replacement for my particular model. Uh, again, I pulled uh, this cover off previously, made sure that I got the right number off of the back of the switch itself and this is what I ordered and we will just get it out of the package just to compare just like that you can see that it is identical it's just that one is currently plugged up and the other one is not 
So we're going to get these plugs swapped and then get this one remounted. Just like that, I have got the new switch plugged in. Of course, here is the old one that had failed. So now we're just going to remount this back into the stove and put the knob back on. Now that we've got the switch back in, I'm going to put the panel back on. Again, it is slips right back into place with not really any issue whatsoever. Okay guys, here is the bad switch that we just replaced. The only thing left for us to do now is to slide this back into place, plug it up, and try it out. I will put a link to this particular part down in the description below. Uh, that way if any of you guys have this particular stove, you can pick this up. Anything you buy through those links kind of helps go to support what we do here. I currently have this element on low. It has not gone wide open the way that it did previously. I turn it on up. You can see that it is starting to glow a little more red. Turn it down slightly. So now we do have this repaired and that's a great thing and guys this is a very simple repair something that can save you some money on your appliances instead of paying some expensive repairman again you saw just how simple it was to replace that switch again if you have a stove one of these flat top stoves like this where your element is just going to high continuously more than likely, the switch is going to be the culprit. But guys, hope you liked the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me any questions down below in the comments. Also, guys, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Check out all of the links down in the description. And we will see you next time.